Let's take a quick look at our current setup. We're using React Native Maps for our maps. We have a series of images that we will render inside of our scroll view. We're pulling off the width and the height of our dimensions and de determining the size of our card height based upon the height. So uh, our card heights will be a quarter width of the screen. Then additionally, we will have some markers set up. These will have coordinates on the screen, as well as we will be putting our images there, as well as some text. Finally, we have our map view set up with our initial region, and then we are getting a reference to our map. Now we'll start by looping over our markers. So we'll say this.state.markers.map, and we will get our marker and our index and then return a map view dot marker. We'll start by passing in key equals index just to prevent warnings. And then also we'll say coordinate is equal to marker dot coordinate, which has the latitude and longitude. Now, in order to render custom markers on the screen, rather than just the normal pin, you just render the them as children of the Matthew marker. So I'll first do an animated.view with a style of styles.marker wrap. This will help us do our animations later. This then will render animated.view again and say style equals styles.ring. This will be our expanding ring. And then we can just render our regular view and say style equals styles.marker. And now if we go ahead and refresh this, we can see that we are now rendering four different markers on the screen with custom views. Now we'll set up our scroll view of content. Our scroll view of content will live outside of our map view and we'll say animated.scrollView. And for our properties, we will say it's horizontal. And we will say scroll event throttle is equal to one because we'll, use be, we'll be using native animations. We will say show horizontal scroll indicator is equal to false. And then we'll say snap to interval is equivalent of our card width. Now this is an iOS only property, so it'll just help the scroll view snap to the indices of the scroll uh, of each card uh, only on iOS, but not on Android. Then we'll add our two styles. So we we'll say style is equal to styles.scrollView that we have set up. And then additionally, we'll say content container style, which there's an inner, inner view inside of the scroll view that wraps all of the content. And we'll give that styles.end padding. This will just add some padding at the end so that you can actually scroll past the last item. Otherwise, you would never be able to select the last item. Now we'll also loop over our markers here because they contain all the information. So this.state.markers.map. Get our marker and our index. Here we'll return a view, which is our wrapping view, which will have the key of our index and the styles equal to styles.card. Then we'll render our image and we'll say source is equal to our marker.image. Give it our style. So style is equal to styles.card image. Then resize mode will be cover. And now when we refresh, we can see that we're now setting up our scroll view at the bottom with our images and content. Now we'll render our text content below that. So say view is equal to style equals styles dot text content. We'll then render our text and we'll just say number of lines is equal to one because of the potential different screen sizes and stuff. We'll just limit everything to one line and let it ellipse size. And then we'll give our style of styles.card title and render our marker.title and close that. And then we'll do the same thing for our description where we'll limit it to one line. Say style is equal to styles.description. 
sorry, card description. Render our marker dot description. And now when we refresh, we can see we have our card title description and our text ellipsizing below our images that are covering the specified space that we've given it. Now we need to go set up our animation. We'll go create a component will mount lifecycle method and say this.animation is equal to a new animated value that we'll just set to zero. Now on our animated scroll view, we'll need to set up on scroll and use our animated.event, which will automatically map uh, the event to us. So we'll say uh, the array. The first argument is going to be the event. We'll then grab the native event, get the content offset of our native event, and get the x, and then pass that to this.animation. So every time that we scroll from left to right, it'll automatically update our this.animation. And then we will pass in use native driver as true. And that way, all of our animations will take place on the native side. To make our animations work, we're going to need to set up some interpolations based upon the scroll from left to right and the size of our card. So we're going to say const interpolations is equal to this.state.markers. And we're just going to map over our markers. And we'll also need the index. We'll need to construct our input range. And our input range will be from a negative value to the current value of when we want the thing to actually be active, and then also when we want it to be inactive. So we'll say const input range is equal to an array. And we'll say index minus 1 times the card width. Then when we want our thing to be active is when the scroll view is at the index times the card width. So that will be in just index times card width. And then when we want our marker to be inactive, we will do index plus 1 times the card width. Now that we have our input range set up based upon each of our cards, we can say const scale is equal to this.animation.interpolate. Pass in our input range and then specify our output range. So for scale, we'll say when it's inactive, it'll just be 1. When it's active, it'll be 2.5. And then when it's inactive again, it'll be back to one scale. We'll be sure to extrapolate clamp so that regardless of when we animate or how far this animation value gets outside of our range, it will never go beyond one on either side. Then we'll set up our opacity. So say const opacity is equal to this.animation.interpolate. Pass in our input range as well. Our output range will be when it's inactive, it will be 35. When it's active, it'll be a full opacity, and then it'll be back down to 35% opacity. And once again, we'll have to say extrapolate clamp here. Otherwise, as this animation continues, this will bypass the 35% animation and go all the way back to zero, and then we won't be able to see all of the markers. Then we'll just return scale and opacity here so we can use that later. Now that we have our interpolations, we need to now set up our styles based upon each particular marker. So we'll say const scale style is equal to a transform, which is an array of transforms. And in our case, we'll say scale and say interpolations, the index of our marker dot scale. And then we'll also set up our opacity style and say opacity is equal to interpolations index dot opacity. Now we need to pass those into the appropriate views. So the first thing we'll do is make this array so we can combine styles. And we'll just pass opacity style into our outer animated wrapping view. So that way the whole entire marker will be opaque and be controlled by that particular animation. And then for our ring, we'll say scale style because we'll just have the outer ring scale. So now if we refresh, we can see that because we're on the first index of zero, uh, then this is 
scaled up and fully opaque and the rest are at the 35% opacity. And as we scroll, we can see that as we transition in between each of the different indexes that the animated views and interpolation will respond accordingly. Now it appears that we also still have our indicator. So let's go take a look at that. And we can see that it should be shows horizontal scroll indicator rather than show horizontal scroll indicator. So in refresh, we can see that there's no more horizontal indicator when we, whenever we scroll. The final thing that we'll do is set up component did mount. We'll say this.index is equal to zero so we can track our active index. And then we'll just paste this code and we'll take a look at it. We'll attach a listener so that we can get access to the value and respond as the particular scroll view is scrolling. We'll then get the value divided by the card width plus 0.3 so we have some threshold as it's scrolling. And this will be able to calculate the index that we are currently looking at based upon the amount that we've scrolled. If we are greater than the amount of markers that we have, then we'll just say we're at the last index. Same for if we bounce to the left here, it will just always stay at this index of zero. Then we'll set up a pseudo debounce where we are setting a timeout every 10 milliseconds, but because this event listener is called every single time that this is scrolling, this will be able to wait until we're done scrolling to animate the region change between the markers. Then we'll just say if the previous index does not equal the index that we're currently at, then we will animate the region on the ref that we've accessed. This is the ref to the map view and animate to the region of the coordinate. So the middle of the map will be the coordinate of the marker. And then we'll just access the same latitude delta and longitude delta and animate over 350 milliseconds. So when we refresh, we can drag this and once we're done scrolling, or once that 10 milliseconds elapse from when the callback happens, we will focus on that particular map view marker.